OK, people, what we're going to do on this is we're going to create three-dimensional text based off 2D text. Now, this is quite actually straightforward. Um, and the way we're going to do it is just by using this example in front of us. So how do we do it? Well, we'll go to the File menu and do New. And I'm going to create the width of 800 and the height of 800. And OK. And then we go to our text tool on the left-hand side. And I'm going to click roughly middle and just type in SQL and then click on the move tool and just get it a little bit more central so I've got a bit of room to play. Right, so what we need to do is we need to use a spe specific kind of transformation called perspective. However, if we go straight into the edit menu and choose transform, which is where it sits, you'll notice that perspective is switched off. Now, the reason being is at the moment, the text is not in a suitable format. What we need to do is we need to change it into what's known as a rasterized image. Now, if you go searching um, on, on the internet what rasterization is, it's a quick, dirty method of making things three-dimensional. So what we've got to do is we've got to convert not just the text but the whole layer to being rasterized and this is done by going into the layer menu and you um, would choose um, rasterize and then just select the first one which is type which is specific to text. Now it's done something, can you tell? No, there's nothing there whatsoever. However, if we go back to the edit menu now and we go to transform you'll now see that you've got perspective available so I'm going to click on that and then using the corner symbols up and down you can now do this funky little option as you can see look there we go way it's going a bit 3d for me and I'm just going to make the other side stick out some more don't want to go too mad so that'll do and then you just press enter to confirm that change the transformation and then what we've got to do next is we've got to now create um, sort of like the side walls because although yes well done you've created three-dimensional text it still does not stand out as well as say this example here we want these walls appearing so how's that done well back in the document what we do is with the layer selected um, we use some keyboard shortcuts here hold down the alt key and left arrow now what this does is it does a copy of the layer but it does something also very specific which is creates a copy of the layer and moves it one pixel to the left now what I'm going to do to save time is I'm going to press this alt key to the left several times and you'll get the idea so if you just bear with me you should see multiple different layers appearing as you can see now because I've used the alt key and left arrow um, 20 times I've now got 20 different layers now we're not going to work on all of these what we're going to do now to finish this all off is with the top one selected scrolling down your layer palette we will select the first one on the list, um, which is the SQL copy, not the base one. We're going to need to fiddle with that in a minute. So holding down the shift key and click on the bottom one there. We'll just now right click in the same place. And what you'll find is you have an option called merge layers, which is what we want to do. And there we go. We've now got those 20 layers into one. So basically, I'm going to call this smudge. because that's what it is, it's just the smudge of text, which is going to end up being our sidewalls. Now, the only other thing now is, priority-wise of display, the SQL text needs to sit on top. Now, what we're going to do, now we've reprioritized, is we're going to fiddle around with the, um, the smudge or the sidewalls first. So with them selected, we are going to the FX button at the bottom, which will give us our blending options, and I'm going to choose Gradient Overlay. Now with the screen, I've got to make sure we can see what I'm clicking on. So I'm just going to move that there. Have a look. Wow, it's made it 3D. It's starting to look fantastic. But I want it to look like it's chrome. I don't want it to look um, very, very black and white. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the gradient style to a um, metal kind of look, like this one here, which is um, silver. Um, but bear in mind, if I just move the box down a little bit so we can see on the video, um, there are other types of looks around, so you may not want to stick with metals. I think that's very blokey kind of thing, you know, metals, engines, cars, and so on. I'm going to keep it on metals, but you may want to have pastels or some kind of spectrum um, colors and so on. So you can do some really funky um, looks to this, but I'm going to click on to that one there. And just again, click into here. And as you can see now, it's starting to look a bit more like Chrome. I'm going to OK that. 
because I'm quite happy with it at the moment. I will be coming back to edit it in a moment. I'm going to go up to the top layer again. And with that selected, do exactly the same thing to the FX button and then gradient overlay. Um, by default, it's just the black and white again. I don't want that. I want to have the metal effect. And now we hit our problem. Problem is, look at that. Okay, we've now got a gradient smudge. There's no definition to the front. It, it doesn't look 3D anymore. It just looks like someone's put it on a piece of paper and the ink's run. So how do we fix that? Well, there's lots of different ways you can attack this, but the one for best results i found is that we need to turn on the bevel and emboss feature. So over on the left-hand side, staying in the layer adjustment, what we're going to do is now we're going to um, tick the bevel and emboss. My pet peeve is when you do bevel and emboss, I've ticked it, great, I'm starting to see definition here, but I'm not seeing any options. Why oh why Photoshop? If I click on the tick box, I want to see the options. So you've got to click on the text to get there. So, okay, I'm quite happy. There are different styles, so you could have an outer bevel if you wanted to, so it makes it look like it's been squished at the ends. Um, I'm going to keep it on an inner bevel so it looks more rounded, but I may want to change the size so it sticks out some more. So I don't want to go too mad, but I'm quite happy with that at about 9 pixels. Um, the other thing as well is the contour, which is how the light is looking at it. Just move the options up a little bit. I'm going to change the contour um, to this half-rounded one. Why? I, I just like using half-rounded. It, it sort of makes it a little bit more realistic in my eyes. So um, as you can see, the light source has um, sort of changed position, if you will. I'm also going to click on to anti-aliased, um, which just basically smooths out any ruffled um, edges. And I'm going to click on OK. Okay, that's all right, but still, it it still's got this banding of white, which is horrible. So what I'm going to do is going to go back to the walls again, the smudge, and I'm going to double click on the gradient overlay. Now, you could start fiddling around with the gradient itself by going into the options, and then you can start fiddling around, moving with these things. Don't. Just don't. Okay. Why? Because if you start fiddling with that and you want to make lots of 3D text, lots of different images, you're going to have to remember precisely where you've moved it, what the colour is, otherwise you're never going to get the same effect across all of your text. So I'm just going to click on to cancel here because I don't do not want to do that. You could then start fiddling around with the angle and moving it. You could do, but I have problems with that because it affects the light source. The light source was correct where it was. Moving it around, you can get some pretty good effects, but it's still not perfect. So again, just don't. Just don't do it because it's, it's a headache if you wanted to recreate in the future. Here's what I want you to do. Just move your mouse into the actual picture itself and you'll notice you get a north house, north out, uh, I'll start again, north, east, south, west symbol on your arrow. What this means is you can move the gradient. This will not move the text. So holding down the mouse button and dragging downwards, look at that. So you're keeping the same effect, but you've now change the light source in effect so it, it sort of does look chrome and it looks correct so I'll just click on OK now and there's our finished article look at that beautiful so the final thing is I'm just going to click on the marquee tool and select this area and then I'm going to go to the edit menu and choose copy merged so in effect just make it one image and then do file new and it takes up the proportions of the um, the marquee tool and then when I do paste control V um, there you go look at that looking quite nice so finishing article is I'm just going to put a black box around the outside again several ways you can do this I'm just old school I'm going to move the layer down and there you have it look at that so within less than 10 minutes of me showing you you've now got quite a sexy looking bit of text this is not the only video that I'm supplying. Please go to pcteachme, um, pcteach.me for more videos on Photoshop, SQL, and all sorts of exciting stuff in IT. Um, so thanks for watching, and I hope to see you there. Goodbye.